What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to your home for all things combat sports. Yo, yo. So Renat Fakrandinov, I think, is a name that we all need to familiarize ourselves with. Incredible first round finish against the Motown phenom Kevin Lee. Unfortunately for Kevin, this was about as bad as a reintroduction to the UFC as you could possibly hope for, but it certainly seems like Renat might get the fast track after that one. Absolutely. And this is one of those guys where it's not too early to jump on the bandwagon now, but do it before it gets too late because this guy seems like he's right there with the Shavkat Rachmanovs and the Hamzat Chemaevs that are going to get fast tracked for the, by the UFC. And they look really good, and they clearly have the top-level skills that the UFC was looking for. They just didn't make it into the UFC until recently. And when you see this guy who's got like a 20-fight win streak, you're just dealing with somebody who was UFC caliber all along, and we didn't realize it. Now he's only a couple fights into the UFC's career, but I know this guy has a lot of potential, and I can't wait to see what he does at 170. Yeah, and I think he's a he's a double threat, right? Just like Shavkat, just like Hamzat. He's got tremendous power. Mm -hmm. He demonstrated that right away on the feet with Kevin. He was pressuring forward, landed a beautiful one-two combination that put Kevin down, and then that guillotine was just filthy. I mean, he yeah. put Kevin totally to sleep, and he had that so cinched up that it actually took the referee a second to realize that Kevin Lee was even out, but he was stone cold out. He woke up confused, didn't know where he was. And the Motown Phenom is a guy that not that long ago, a lot of people were talking about as a title contender at 155. Now I know the reintroduction fight was at 170, which I don't necessarily think that's Kevin's natural weight class, but nevertheless, Kevin Lee is a formidable opponent. And to get in there and just deal with him like he's nobody, you have to take notice. Renat, the gladiator, as they call him, is somebody to watch out for. And I don't think the UFC would have spent the type of money that they had to spend to get Kevin Lee back, right? Because he's not one of these guys that's on a 10 to show, 10 to win type of contract. The UFC definitely paid some money to bring Kevin back into the organization. And to hand him a first fight like this, it almost feels like they were willing to shell out the money just to get their new hot prospect, Renat, a big name under his belt. Yeah, I agree. And Kevin Lee's about as big of a name as you can get on your rise to the top and you've only had two or three fights in the UFC. And Kevin Lee is always one of those guys that once he got cut from the UFC, I was like, man, he, it felt like he had more business in the UFC, but he just didn't quite reach his potential. And I think whenever people were talking about the 165 division that should happen, and maybe we should move 170 to 175, uh, obviously that's never going to happen. But people instantly started to think of Kevin Lee as a front runner for the 165 right. uh, top of the heap. And now we're starting to realize that maybe 170 is a little big for him. 155 is a little small for him, but there is nowhere for him to go. And he'd rather give up a little bit of size than give up all of his strength and deplete himself so much to get to 55. But when you're swimming with the Sharks at 170, you have to realize that these guys are big, they're strong, they're still just as fast as you are. And when you're dealing with somebody who's brand new to the UFC, has a lot to prove still, but clearly has the skills of somebody who's been in the UFC for you know 10 fights or more, uh, you have to be very careful and you have to be very calculated, especially when you carry a name like Kevin Lee's because these guys have a point to prove. They really want to make that statement victory. And if they can get a name like Kevin Lee on their record, especially by first round finish, by complete total domination, you're talking about a very big move for these guys. So for these veterans, for these big names in the sport, they always have to watch out when there's a guy coming in who's on a 19-fight win streak who wants to tear your head off and just so happens to be, you know, a mustacheless fighter from that part of the world yeah. that's very <laughs> dangerous. And, you know, every now and again you'll hear somebody that's totally wrong say, oh, but these guys, they go and pat their records over in Russia or they're, they're fighting in Europe and they're just giving them tomato cans. And, and then you see them coming to the UFC and they're just dominating everybody yeah. at the highest level. And you're like, okay, well, regardless of who they fought on the regional scene in Russia or the regional scene in Europe, they were fighting really good opposition and they were winning in, in crazy fashion. And I just think that this uh, Renat guy, and I'm only going to call him Renat right now because I don't think I have Fakrindinov. the skills. Fakrindinov. Fakrindinov. Yeah. You're better with right. the names yeah. than me. Uh, I'm only going to call him Renat for now, but I think this guy is a star on the rise. And if we can see him put together a few more wins like this, we could see him right in the top five in no time. Yeah, I definitely think so. And to your point, it really doesn't matter who he fought in those regional circuits because he just finished the Motown Phenom. You know, that was right. the biggest complaint for Khabib and Islam. And it's like, well, 
you know, may, maybe the opposition wasn't as good, but guess what? No opposition is as good as the UFC. That's why the UFC is what it is. So, of course, you're not going to fight guys on your way up that are, you know, the top level, top five, top 10 guys in the UFC. Right. But you have to look at what they're doing against the opposition that they're getting in the UFC. And for Shavkat Rachmanov, who's got a big test against Kelvin Gastelum coming up, for Hamzat Chemaev, and now for Renat the Gladiator Fakhrindinov, it certainly looks like they're able to hang. So their records before padded or not padded are really irrelevant to me. I totally agree. And to touch on the X's and O's of this fight, uh, I have to say that Renat came out with tons of pressure. He was pushing Kevin Lee back from the very, very first part of the fight. And I think that if you've got that type of skills and you know what you're doing on the ground, which clearly if you're submitting Kevin Lee, you have an idea in the submissions and the grappling aspect of MMA, uh, you're dealing with somebody who's a threat everywhere you want to take the fight. And when they just just charge at you like that they're a big body they're strong they don't get finished they maybe they never lose their fights you're dealing with somebody that uh, almost you have to get real creative in your game plan and real creative in your fight camp to determine how you're gonna deal with these guys like should i run around the side and let them chase me and then optically lose the round to the judges while they slowly get a little bit tired or do i try to go take it to a pressure fighter and meet them in the middle kind of like the the mexican boxing style everybody right. talks about how two you know mexican boxers will come in the middle and they'll just you know stand in front of each other nobody takes a step back both of those options are very dangerous when you're talking about guys like Renat because he can take the fight anywhere that he wants and he's very good on the feet and he's also very good at taking the fight to the ground. So you don't know where to go and you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. And you just sort of wind up flabbergasted, caught on your heels and then instantly get crashed in on and then knocked out and or not knocked out, but uh, finished in Kevin Lee's situation because once he got dropped, the fight was basically over. But once he started to look for that wrestling, which is instinctive in somebody like Kevin Lee who grew up wrestling, you realize very quickly that those were just instincts and he was still very much wobbled. And once you have somebody on your neck like that, it's only a matter of time. And I know it was kind of hard for the referee to see if he was unconscious or not, but there was no mistake about it once they did pull the fighter off of him that Kevin Lee was completely asleep because he slid across the floor like he was limp. Yeah, well, the referee couldn't tell that Kevin Lee was out because he shot in on that single leg. Mm -hmm. And then Renat kind of sat down, sort of sandwiching Kevin's arm in between right. the back of his hamstring and his calf. So the, the referee couldn't really tell that Kevin's arm was limp because it was basically being held stationary right. by Renat's leg. So I don't really blame the ref there. He was good awareness. And, you know, Kevin lives to fight another day. He was okay. He was a little confused afterwards. Mm -hmm. But... You know, Renat Fakhrandinov, Hamzat Chemaev, Shavkat Rachmanov. The names are a little difficult to pronounce at 170, but boy, are these guys exciting. And I think we're seeing the wave of what's to come. Absolutely. And an early prediction on the welterweight division is in 18 to 24 months, it's going to be the most stacked and most dominant division in the entire UFC. I could see it.